know about you, but when I have projects where there isn't really a well-defined design request, in this case my mother-in-law just needed a place to put a plant, I see that as an opportunity to experiment. If it doesn't turn out the way I hope it will, no big deal, since she didn't really need anything fancy anyway, whatever that means. And no matter if it turns out well or not, I'll learn something and improve my craft a little. So that's how I'm approaching this one. I'm just going to use it as an opportunity to experiment. So I'm about to cut my legs to their final width, but I actually really need to consider this pattern before I do that. If you look, I've got this kind of curve that goes from the, from the top to the bottom on the thing. Um, but here in the middle is where I'm gonna join a couple of short stretchers to it. And so I need to have a nice flat surface area there for joinery. So the way I'm gonna accomplish that is I'm going to cut both my pattern and all of my leg stock to width here so that it's a little bit shy, probably about a 16th to an eighth of an inch shy of the full four inch width. So that way I end up with this nice flat surface that kind of cuts through that curve just a little bit and gives me an area where I can do my joinery. Now that everything's cut to size, I am going to trace the pattern on, but at the same time, I also want to mark the center line for my joinery here. So I've got the pattern lined up at the bottom and at the top, and of course resting on the workbench. But all I'm gonna do is just take the center line that I've got marked in the pattern and just transfer it over. Then I can just trace out my pattern. You can also see right now, this is the area that I was concerned about for the joinery. And the curve is it meets the flat of this side of the leg blank. That curve stops around here. So this area from about here to about here is completely flat, so there's a, there's no curve there. I'll soften it up once I actually get the joinery in and get it put together. I'll soften it up a little bit, make sure there's a nice, smooth transition there, but um, for the purposes of my joinery, it'll, it'll be nice and clean and flat. I'm using loose tenons to join the legs to the stretchers and to cut the mortises I'm using my shop made slot mortar sir which is pretty much my go-to lately. This could also be done with a normal plunge router set up with an edge guide or could be replaced with dowels or and I feel like saying this is backwards from what you'd normally hear in a YouTube video. You could always use a domino. Thank you. 
In addition to the curved taper you already saw me cut, I decided to add a double taper to the other two sides of the legs. With there already being a curved cut, I can't use any kind of a jig to do this, so instead I'm just marking the tapers out and I'm going to cut them out at the bandsaw. If you've been watching my other videos, you might notice that they weren't released in order since my vice setup wasn't finished when I filmed this and I had to use one of these inline dog clamps to clamp this leg down and clean it up. It worked pretty well though and I was able to get all the legs cleaned up without any issues. So here's a spot where experimenting led to, let's just call it a learning opportunity. I waited to cut this joinery on the top of the legs until last and the fact that the curves were already cut in made this harder than it really had to be. Two stretchers get joined together with a lap joint and there's two things to note here. First, the height of the cut on each one is different since the center of my finished piece will be different once I cut the curves into it. Second, I set my stops up to cut half the joint at a time to make sure it stayed perfectly centered. I'm using a router to cut the round top for this stand. The easiest way to do that is to make use of the router's edge guide as a quick and dirty circle cutting jig. 
there's a quarter inch hole in the edge guide that I can make use of, so I tapped quarter 20 threads in the bottom side and used a bolt to keep everything centered. This is also one of those spots where I could have had my order of operations laid out a little better, and you'll see why in a second. I only cut a couple passes with the router and then took the top over the bandsaw and used the router cut as a guide to cut away the waste. This leaves a lip that I had to take over to the router table and remove with a pattern routing bit. While I was there, I also added a heavy chamfer to the bottom of the tabletop, and I did this in several light passes until I got the depth that I wanted. So here's that issue with my order of operations that I mentioned. I really should have made these cuts after cutting the circle with my router, but before removing my nice square faces at the bandsaw. I realized this too late and I had to resort to cutting square joinery on a curved surface. I made sure to do this safely by clamping it in place, but this would have been a lot easier if I still had the square faces from before I cut the circle.
I'd like to give a special thanks to my first supporter over on Patreon. I'll probably butcher his name, so I won't try. I'll just say thank you for supporting the channel. I think my experiment turned out pretty well. It certainly serves its purpose of being able to hold up a potted plant for my mother-in-law, so that's a plus. But I also really like this combination of mahogany that was left over from my dining chairs and ash that was left over from the workbench. I think the two woods really complement each other, and that's not something that I would have thought of had this not been an experiment. So thanks for watching, and I hope you enjoyed the video, and I hope you come back for the next one.